you turn with me to Second Samuel chapter 4, and we're going to read Second Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, and then we're going to read Second Samuel chapter 9 in that order. Second Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, and then Second Samuel chapter 9. And the word of the Lord reads, and Jonathan's, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet, and he was five years old. When the tidings came to Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell, and he became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. Second Samuel chapter 9, and David said, Is there any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto him, David, the king, said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there any, is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Makar, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Makar, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face, and he did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, Where is thy servant, that thou shalt look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto the master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Now therefore thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring him fruits, that the master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, excuse me, Thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. We'll skip down to verse 11. Then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that, my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and he was still laying on both of his feet. And if I could choose a text for this particular uh, uh, scripture that we have on this morning, it's simply come out of Lodabar. Come out of Lodabar. You may be seated. Our text today focuses on two main characters. We see David and we see Mephibosheth, the grandson of Saul, the son of Jonathan. It is a story about the distress that is experienced that is caused by change. It is a story about an invitation that was accepted. There's a story about friendship and promises, grace, love, compassion, forgiveness, and hope. So seldom in the profile that is readily available about David do we see 
such kindness. David is generally thought of or known as the little shepherd who slew the giant. He's also known as the individual that committed adultery with Bathsheba. We also know David to be the one who ran from Saul. We also know David to be a great king. Even the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. We remember him for being uh, the one that relocated the art of the covenant to Jerusalem. And we also know that he had a friendship with Jonathan. We see the relationship of David and Jonathan like best friends. And I tell people all the time that in ministry, every David needs a Jonathan. Every David needs that person that he can rely on. He needs that person that he has his back, a confidant that he can talk to, she can talk to. He also needs a Nathan too. It is the friendship with Jonathan that brings us to this story today. Earlier in Samuel, we see a very beautiful friendship between Jonathan and David. We know that they are close because the scripture gives us to know that they loved each other as if it were their own souls. David and Jonathan had a bond. They had a, a, a bond that they bonded together and they were very loyal to one another in spite of how Saul felt about David. And David and Jonathan had made a covenant of friendship to each other, promising that whoever survived or outlived each other would look after each other's families. And so we see here, going back to Samuel chapter 10, we see that Saul was the first king. Saul was the people's choice. Um, if they had a voting system back then, uh, the people would have voted for Saul. Uh, Saul had the, the physical appearance of a king. Uh, he had that look of leadership. He had that look that he can lead a group of people. And because he had that look, because he came across as a, 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 a leader that can take them to the next level, they chose Brother Saul. But we all know that in Samuel chapter 16, that David is God's choice. So we know Saul was the people's choice. But David was God's choice. Now, based off of the lineage, technically, the sons would be the next one in line after Saul died. So it would have been Jonathan and then Mephibosheth. But God rejects Saul because Saul rejected God. And so that cancels out the lineage of Saul. So John's, uh, Jonathan, which is Saul's son, should have possibly been the king. But because Saul rejected God, that messes it up for Jonathan and everybody else that comes after Jonathan. And so we see Jonathan fighting side by side in battle with his father, Saul. And the word of the Lord reads that both of them ended up dying together in battle. Jonathan was torn between his father and his friend. David, excuse me, the father Saul represents the source of the flesh. Where David represents the will of God. So Jonathan stays with his father. He stays with flesh and he dies without reaching his destiny. Now that Saul was dead... David had been crowned king of Israel. And it was a common practice in those days to exterminate all of the members of a previous dynasty to prevent any descendants from seeking the throne. As long as a spark of life from that family still existed, it was a threat to the new king. 
So as a new king, it's my job to kill everybody that's connected to Saul. But yet David's response was quite the contrary. He asked, is there anybody remaining from Saul's family? I don't come to kill his family, but I come to show them kindness for Jonathan's sake. Ah, because I made a covenant with Jonathan, because I had a relationship with Jonathan, because me and Jonathan were ace boom coons, because that was my boy, I'm coming to show his family kindness. And so we know that Jonathan had a son, and technically Mephibosheth had rights to the throne, but he was rejected because his grandfather was rejected. And David and Jonathan made, again, that blood covenant that they would look after each other's families. And now it has come to the point where David has to honor what he said. What we know about Mephibosheth is that he has a condition that hinders his position. It hinders him from walking correctly. The Bible says that he's lame from his feet. The word or the name Mephibosheth means shameful one. Notice that his identity by his crippled condition goes before his name. If you look at the text, we know about his condition before we even know who he is. And some of us have been labeled by our issues. Some of us have been labeled by our conditions. You know me by being the lame. You know me by being the crippled before you even get to know who I am as an individual. And so some of us are walking around this world being mentally lame, spiritually lame, physically lame, and we're known by our condition than whether, uh, 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 excuse me, our condition and not known by who we are as a man and as a woman. And so we see, because he's shamed of his condition, the Bible says that he lives in a city called Lodabar. And Lodabar, that, that name means a place of no communication. Lodabar was not a good place. The very meaning is not having or no pasture. It was a town of forgotten people. It's a town where the people that are, are, are not popular go. I may be uh, liken it to maybe the downtown area. We see a lot of homeless downtown. I can imagine that it probably looked like downtown L.A. In Lodabar, we would find the lost. It's in Lodabar where we find the unskilled individuals. It's in Lodabar where we find the uneducated outcasts, the ones that are outcasts from society. It's in Lodabar that we find those people that were scorned, those that would pass by and pay no attention to them. Those of us uh, that would be just another statistic of, on a government report lived in Lodabar. And some of us, even in today's time, in 2024, live in a Lodabar-type state. We know somebody in Lodabar. We walk around, we drive around, and we ignore the individuals that are in Lodabar. We ignore the saints that are going through. We ignore our friends that have issues that may be in the spiritual Lodabar. We don't want to talk about our problems. We don't want to talk about uh, uh, us living in despair. Again, some of us are living in Lodabar, and we wonder, how did we get to Lodabar? How did I get to this situation where I'm at? How did I come up to Lodabar? Glory to God. I've been in Lodabar too long. The Bible says that he was five when this happened. Glory to God. And David doesn't come and get him until he's in his 20s. So he's been in Lodabar all this time. And as a five-year-old, I can imagine him wondering, how did I get here? Well, the Bible talks about that. We see here, again, uh, 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 Saul and Jonathan dying in battle. And so the Bible says that the nurse ends up taking Mephibosheth. And she escapes with him for fear 
that they were going to come and kill him. And while they're escaping, the Bible says that she drops him. She accidentally dropped him. It wasn't on purpose. She drops him. And the drop was so heavy. The drop was so hard that he ended up becoming crippled. Now, of course, they didn't have the modern technology that we have in today's time. They didn't have the, the scientific methods of fixing broken limbs. And so they did what they had to do back then. So because he went so long without getting the care that he needed, the Bible said he became lame. He was damaged by someone he trusted because that someone was supposed to help him. But she ended up hurting him in the long run. How many of us have been damaged by relatives and family members? How many of us have been damaged by the saints in the church? And now all of a sudden we got church hurt because of something that happened a long time ago. How many of us have been damaged? How many of you have been dropped, glory to God, in your lifetime? And now because I'm dropped, now I'm broken, and I'm walking around in a broken state. Glory to God. I know I'm helping somebody in this place. How many of us have been dropped and you wonder why the, the reason why you withdraw from the church? You wonder the reason why you withdraw from your family. You wonder the reason why you act the way you act is because you've been dropped. Glory to God, by somebody that should have been taking care of you. You've been dropped by somebody that you trusted. You've been dropped by somebody who was supposed to see you out of the, your situation. You've been dropped by somebody that was supposed to help you in the long run. Hey, hey. But she drops him. Glory to God. Past hurts because I've been dropped. Past situations because I've been dropped. Because of who you are and your family lineage in the church, sometimes we've been dropped and we've been told, and I can't speak for everybody, but I know for my family, we've been told to sweep it underneath the carpet. Because your daddy is bishop so-and-so. Or your grandfather was the head deacon of the church. And so because we don't want to bring any shame on the family, we're told to sweep it underneath the carpet. But I'm coming to tell you today that you no longer have to sweep those issues under the carpet on today. You can be free from your load of bar state. And so we see here David looking for someone in the house of Saul. Again, because of his blood covenant that he made with Jonathan. And just like David, God is looking to save anybody that is willing to be saved because of the blood covenant that he made between him and man. Mephibosheth could not get to the palace due to his physical state. He wasn't able to get there. And we see that the servant had to go and pick him up. And the servant brings him to the palace. Mephibosheth is now in the palace. He's no longer in Lodabar. He's now at the palace. He's been delivered from Lodabar, but he's still damaged. How many of you have been delivered from your Lodabar state, but you still deal internally with the damage that was caused when you were a child? From the damage that was caused last year or the year before that or before COVID or 10 years ago. He's in the palace. He's been delivered from Lodabar, but he's still damaged. We have adopted a mentality that to be delivered means no more struggle. And that's not always true. God never promised that everything was going to be peaches and cream. God never promised and said that you wouldn't go through nothing. He never promised that once you got saved that you would not have any more struggles. That you would not have any more setbacks. That you would not have any more hardships. But he renewed your spirit through salvation. He renewed your mind through sanctification. And when we get up to heaven, he's going to renew your body. And that's when the struggle will stop. So you ought to be pressing your way, trying to get to heaven, so that all my struggles can be delivered. So all my struggles can be set free. So all my pain that's been caused in Lodabar can be gone. 
Glory to God. Yeah. He'll renew that body when we get into heaven. But in the meantime, physically, we struggle and we limp. So I'm no longer in Lodabar, but I still have the same condition. I'm in a new place with an old problem. I'm a leader in the church, but I struggle. Glory to God. I'm an usher in the church. I'm an usher in the Lord's house, but I got issues. I'm nursing, taking care of the sick, but I got issues. I'm up here leading praise and worship and singing to the glory of God, but I still struggle with my issues. I'm up here preaching Sunday after Sunday, but still got issues. Still struggling. Glory to God. I'm in a successful place of employment, but I'm damaged still. Some of you are a father, and you're damaged. Some of you are mothers, and you're damaged. You love the Lord, but you're damaged. I know I should not have a problem with it, but I'm damaged. Some of us are damaged with all kind of conditions. If we want to keep it real, let's keep it 100. Some of us are damaged with lust. Some of us are damaged with self-image. Some of us are damaged with anger. Some of us are damaged with depression. Some of us are damaged with low self-esteem. And this has all happened because somebody dropped us. Somebody dropped the ball somewhere around the way when I was a child. Somebody dropped me. And it's the person that I trusted the most. And now, because I've been dropped and I'm damaged, I'm missing my now because I'm trapped in my then. And I can't seem to get past it. I said, I'm missing my now because I'm trapped in my then. I'm missing where God is trying to take me now because I can't get past my past. So because I'm stuck in my past, God cannot move me forward. Glory to God. God's trying to move you forward on today, but there's the temple. So you can't be stuck in the past. I know the past hurts. I know it brings up bad memory, but you got to move forward and get out of load of ball. Glory to God. Missing my now because I'm trapped in the then. He felt condemned. He wanted to give up. Not receiving the blessing of the kingdom. I can only imagine you being next in line as the king. And because of one fatal mistake, everything is erased. I can imagine being uh, next in line for a promotion at work. And because of somebody else's mistake, and it's happened to me. Being next in line and somebody else made a mistake that caused me to miss that promotion. I can only imagine how he must have felt. But we see David here. David here tells him to come into the kingdom. He hasn't received the blessing of being in the kingdom. But now he's in the kingdom. But he's not enjoying the kingdom. been delivered, been set free. I'm now in the palace. I'm now in the kingdom, but I don't enjoy being in the kingdom. I'm not getting the benefits of being in the kingdom because I'm steadily still stuck, stuck in my past. And so he tells him that he can have a seat at the table. And it's at the table where Jesus is at. It's at the table that we want to get to. It's at the table where all of our issues, all of our situations are under the table. And the reason why they're under the table, the Bible says that he was lame from where? His feet. And where is his feet? Underneath the table. The table hides my issues. It's the table that hides my shortcomings. It's the table that hides my insecurities. It's the table that hides the fact that I've been dropped. It's the table that hides the fact that I've been wounded. It's the table that hides the fact that I'm going through what I'm going through. And guess what? Everybody that's at the table has issues too. They all have shortcomings. So you're not alone at the table. 
But because all of our issues are at the table, when we look at the people that sit at the table, they all look normal because my issues are under the table. So for uh, on top of the table, everything is good. Everything is gravy, right? Because all of my issues are under the table. It's the table that hides the fact that I'm going through what I'm going through. We used to sing a song, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. I'm trying to get to that table. Trying to get to that table. My handicap is underneath the table, but my peers can't see it. Because we're all sitting above the table. So it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what your issues are. As long as you can get to the table, that's all that matters. Forget what is behind you. Glory to God. Forget what happened in the past. I know it's easier said than done. I know there's some trauma there. Glory to God. But God has sent me to to tell you that you got to move forward. Glory to God. You got to get past that and have a seat at the table. There's freedom for you at the table. There's peace at the table. There's joy at the table. There's long suffering at the table. There's protection at the table. God told me to tell you your healing. Glory to God is at the table. He's calling you out of that load of bar state. He's calling you out of destruction. He's calling you out of fear. He's calling you out of bondage. He's calling you out of sin. He wants you to come out of Lodabar. Listen, I don't know how long you've been in Lodabar. I don't know what your situation is, but God is calling you to come out of your Lodabar stat. He's calling you to come out of that Lodabar situation. For there's room at the table, glory to God, for all of you. There's room at the table for you to get delivered, but you got to come out of Lodabar. Glory to God. I know it's difficult to come out. I know my mind has been trained to stay in Lodabar. I've been in Lodabar so long that I'm so used to it that it becomes the norm. But God is trying to change your norm and tell you to come out of Lodabar. I know you've been dropped. I know you've been hurt. I used to say that there's no such thing as church hurt. I used to. Because the church... Nine times out of ten, ain't got nothing to do with the hurt that happened. The church don't even know. Nine times out of ten. But I can see how mentally, because I got hurt in this place, not this place, but in this place, I can uh, see how they can say I now have church hurt because this is the building or this is the place where the hurt happened. And because this is where I got hurt at, I have difficulty now going to church. And that's why I have church hurt is because I got hurt in the church. The saints that were supposed to watch me, the saints that were supposed to pray over me, the saints that were supposed to fast for me, they're the ones who dropped me. Glory to God. And now I got church hurt. Now there's some trauma behind my church hurt. Now I can't step place in the building because that's where the hurt happened. And every time I drive by, I, it takes me back to that place where I got dropped. Every time I drive by, it takes me back to that place where they hurt me. But God is telling you, don't worry about the past. Come on out of Loda Bar. Glory to God. This is your opportunity to come out of the place where you've been desoluted all these years. This is your opportunity to come out of the place where you've been scrutinized all all these years, come on out of Loda Bar. Because he said, I got room at the table. There's a long table. He says, Come and dine at my table. This is where the feast of the Lord is coming on. And you can come and dine with me at the table. Just like he put Mephibosheth at the table, you too can come to the table. You got a permanent spot, glory to God, at God's table. You got a permanent spot at the Lord's table where the feast of the Lord is going on, where he's supplying a plenty of spiritual food, plenty of spiritual manna. I got to get to the table, y'all. I can no longer be stuck in Lodabar, but I got to get to the table where the feast of the Lord is going on. I got to get to the table where I can grow spiritually. I got to get to the table where I can get delivered. I got to get to the table where I can be set free. Glory to God. And God wants to set free on this morning. You got to make up in your mind. 
I got to get out of Lodabar. bar. I got to get out of Lodabar. bar. And this is why it's important to have the saints because Mephibosheth physically, he couldn't leave Lodabar. Yeah. Couldn't leave. No matter how much he wanted to leave, no matter how bad he tried, because of his physical condition, he could not leave Lodabar. And the Bible says that Ziba had to go and sit one of the servants, and they had to carry him to David. They had to carry him to the palace. And this is why it's so important to have like-minded saints. Sometimes we have to go and carry our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we have to go to Lodabar and get them and bring them to the palace, bring them to the table, bring them to the church. I know you got church hurt, but listen, I need you to come with me because your deliverance, your healing is here in the church. I got to go and get my brother at a load of bar so he can be delivered. The Bible says that everything that he should have had, watch this, and this shows you how awesome God is. Everything that he should have had from Saul's lineage, because technically he would have been next, technically, but God had something different. He wanted David to be the king. But David, with his gracious self, showing him grace and mercy. Because you have to remember, David is a type and shadow of Jesus here. We see the grace that God gives us. And not only did he have a seat at the table. And it wasn't just one time. It was a permanent seat at the table. But he restored everything that Saul had was given to Mephibosheth. His land, his cattle, his servants, everybody. Now Ziba has to serve Mephibosheth. Glory to God. You're in a load of bar state, hallelujah, but God is trying to bring you out so that the people can serve you. Hallelujah. Restoration has finally come. Your restoration has finally come. Glory to God. And God's trying to take you to that place where he can restore you. A lot of us are in Lodabar still. We're in that Lodabar state. But God has sent your 2024 versions of Ziba to come and get you out of Lodabar. And bring you to the house of God where there's a seat at the table where he can restore you back to where you're supposed to be. Come on out of Lodabar.